I have a second channel, Cube Comp MTDX. Hey everybody. Have you ever come across a time where you needed to remove your motherboard's Northbridge or Southbridge chipset heatsink to discover that it has this annoying stuff on the bottom of it as thermal interface material? Yeah, guys, I like to, I like to refer to this stuff as bubblegum thermal interface because uh, it's it, it it reminds you of that water bubblegum you accidentally come across on the bottom of a table somewhere. Yeah, it's like that. It's hard. It's 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 not exactly easy to get off. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna first get rid of this foam around the edge of this heat sink. A lot of times manufacturers will put this foam on here to. Uh, sort of help the heat sink stay I guess even with the chip but I find it sometimes to interfere with pressure downward pressure being applied by the springs now this here is just an old sample heat sink that I grabbed off of a uh, motherboard years ago but uh, there are times where uh, like let's say you have to remove your chipset heat sink and matter of fact a long time ago I did a video about um, this topic. This stuff, not only is it hard to get off of these of, of the uh, heat sink and also the uh, chip, but it doesn't exactly do the greatest job with conducting heat. So, and oftentimes you'd actually want to, uh, you would actually want to get rid of stuff and replace it with your conventional thermal compound. So, I'm still working on getting this off, just scratching it off, really. Once it's scratched off of there, it shouldn't be too much of a problem. This also aid in uh, cleaning up this here in just a moment. So we're almost done. Only got this one side left to do. So for the, that's for the most part out of the way. So as mentioned, this stuff it's just it's such a pain to get off. I mean, so what we're gonna do is to scratch what we can. But you you always notice how a lot of it just remains stuck to the uh, heat sink. And the more you rub this stuff, uh, the hotter it gets. And once it gets hot, it uh it sort of kind of it kind of melts down and it gets even more of a pain to remove. So I'm gonna try a different approach here. Got this can of WD-40 right here. So we're going to put just a small amount on on the uh, surface of this heat sink. I mean, again, we don't need a whole lot, just a little bit. Here we are. Let that sit for just a moment. Got a paper towel ready, so now if you notice the stuff now just comes right off with not too much effort. Put down this a little bit more WD forty. So or a lot more, <laughs> I guess. So I guess if you also happen to have some degreaser or uh, brake cleaner out in the garage, that uh, may also work as well. Okay, so we've got this. It, it's pretty much gone. It's it's gone. So now what we'll do is you don't want to leave the WD-40 on the uh, heatsink. So we'll take a paper towel that hasn't been used for WD-40. And wipe it down as we can. And now I'll follow up with some rubbing alcohol. And we'll go ahead and 
apply that to the uh, base of the heat sink. And we'll let that dry, which it dries pretty quickly because, of course, it's alcohol. It evaporates rather quickly. And now your heat sink is ready to be reused. You can now apply your thermal compound to your chip once you clean it. Now, one thing I want to mention is I don't recommend using WD-40 on your computer components, um, as it could it could damage the uh, it could damage the chip. So, um, you will want to take extra care with getting that stuff off the uh, surface of the uh, North Bridge or South Bridge or GPU die, or whatever you're working with. Um, and once you get that cleaned up and everything, you can then apply your thermal paste and reattach your heat sink and you're good to go. Okay, so I figured I might do this on two more samples. And this time, I'm not going to even bother with scraping this stuff off like I did before. Prior to using WD-40, I'm just going to move straight using the WD-40. So, I'm going to spray some on this one. And let it do its thing. So yeah, W40 is not only good for uh, getting stuck bolts loose, but it's also good for uh, cleaning. It's a good solvent, good cleaner. So now, I'm going to start wiping in. It definitely makes it a lot easier to get this stuff off. It breaks it loose from the heat sink. That's the that's the key thing. It breaks it loose from the heat sink and just like that it's gone. <laughs> then spray this one. Get a second paper towel. Go ahead and wipe this one off. Yeah, let's go ahead and start wiping the stuff off of this one. Now, this one actually has a little bit more on it. So, we'll let it sit for just a tad bit longer. So, we'll just go ahead and see if leaving it longer like that helps. It probably will. Gonna follow up with the uh, rubbing alcohol in the first heat sink. Yeah, guys, I, I tell you, I can't, I can't stand this stuff. Um, <laughs> the good thing is it's not getting used quite as much as it used to, but I can, I can, I can imagine probably some new boards still, um, new motherboards still have this stuff on their. Uh, chipset heat sinks and as I mentioned earlier it's just not a good heat conductor either I mean it it works but I think thermal paste does a better job um, you know, for many years uh, motherboard failures have been an issue due I mean motherboard failures due to chipset overheating and failure has been a common problem um, because the uh, the chip it gets hot and it can't the, the this that bubblegum material just doesn't do the best job at transferring heat to the heat sink and with time it causes the BGA joints on those chips to fail and your your motherboard ultimately fails um, from past experience a lot of times I would take these things off and get this stuff off and put standard thermal paste on there and I noticed the heat sink would be noticeably hotter after so just keep, that's something to keep in mind okay so now we'll go ahead and wipe this one down I mean it does still take some effort But once you once you start rubbing it really good, it just comes right off. And you find and it's 
the W40 really just dissolves it because you can actually see it's on the paper towel now. And just like before, it's gone. So we're going to wipe it down here, get the WD-40 off, and now follow up with the uh, rubbing alcohol. There you have it. Heat sinks are good as new. You got that messy crap off of there. So that is how, that is an easier way to get that nasty bubblegum thermal compound material off of heat sinks from your chipset and sometimes your GPU. Heck, if you're working with older systems like uh, Socket A Athlon or um, Pentium 3s, sometimes you'll find the stuff on, on their heat sinks as well. So, yeah, that's a good way to get it off of there. Now, I should mention, I wouldn't recommend using this on your uh, the chip itself because I'm concerned that it could damage that the WD-40 could damage the chip. Perhaps maybe you could uh, instead of spraying WD-40 directly onto the chip, spray it into a paper towel, and perhaps rub the dye with it that way. Just like I said, I, I can't I can't exactly recommend that, but if you want to do it, that is totally your call. But this is a this is a way you can get this crap off these heat sinks. That way you can replace it with actual decent thermal compound. So anyways, hopefully that's helpful. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Well everybody, that's it for this video. But don't forget, there's a lot more interesting stuff on the channel to check out. Also, if this is your first time visiting this channel, feel free to subscribe to keep your channel. And also don't forget to tick the bell so that we will get notified of new video posts. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. But if you really didn't like it, there is the alternative option available as well. Also, feel free to check out my second channel, CubeComp MTDX. There you'll find videos about bicycling, weather, elevator tours, and all sorts of other neat, interesting stuff. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Feel free to come back and thank you for your support.